What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode. So today we're finally back in Florida and we got to fix something that broke Wisconsin. Wisconsin. <laughs> I keep wanting to say Minnesota for some reason. I don't know why. We didn't never, go to Minnesota. We've never been to Minnesota. Well, yeah, we've never been to Minnesota, but for some reason I keep wanting to say Minnesota. Wisconsin, this thing broke and it kind of broke at an opportune time. So we're going to replace it with that. Stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe because that's to come. But what we're talking about today is this. Have you ever had, you gotta turn it on let's see. All right, so we're gonna turn this puppy on. What are the chances that this is working now? It doesn't even sound like it's working. Nope, oh, there it goes. There's no heat coming out. Oh, there's heat coming out. I can feel it. What are the chances this is working all of a sudden? I don't know. After the bumpy roads, I guess it fixed it. Yeah. Hang tight. We're going to see what's going to happen here. So we were going to replace the fireplace because what had happened was is the infamous 88 code. And if you've never had the 88 code, what it is is an overheat code for the fireplace, whether it be Dometic or this one here is Everlight. And the second, the first time we had it happen, you know, just overheated when we turn it on and you know, it's cold outside. It's forties at thirties at night and we turn it on. It says it's overheating. We're like, there's no way it's overheating. First time we replaced it, got this one. It's been good. We were just in Wisconsin, like we said, and then it lasted for a while in Wisconsin and we had a freezing, freezing week, had to turn it on to heat up the RV. And then one night it just shut off. We got the 88 code. And if you can hear that noise, the Renee is opening up our backup. What the 88 code is, what I can find out, it's obviously overheating, but it the heat is on. And what's happening is the blower stops. So it's not blowing the hot air out in the front here. So of course we call Grand Design and they sent us a new fireplace. Now that we're in Florida and not really needing a fireplace, you know, we're going to get a cold snap for Florida. It's going to get 72 during the day. Oh yeah. Oh, Furion. Oh God. Here we go. Hold on. I got to help Renee. Yeah, I don't want to. So it looks like, yep, Furion. Whereas our first one was a Dometic. I'm going to say this. If this is like our old one, let's put this in and put that in the shed. Because this one used to go to a lower temp. What do you mean lower temp? Like that only goes to like... 71 or something where the old one we have would go to like 68. Oh, so I see what you're saying. Same one. I want to put this in to get that lower temp. Okay. So let's see what we got. We're just going to plug in the new one and make sure it works. All right, turn it down. Temperature, keep pushing it. Low, high. That's it. It's four. The lighting. Okay. High, low. Nothing. Really? That's it. So Renee found the remote, and now with the remote, oh yeah, it goes there. 65. Yes. Oh, I can feel it now. It's already cold. Because remember the old one would go lower, and it was just enough where it wasn't so hot. Yeah. But that one doesn't go that low. I think the lowest it goes is like 75 or 72. Something like that, and it's low, but it gets too hot in here. With this, yeah. if this was like our old one, that 65 was like that perfect. Yep. Kept the chill out. So cool. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna replace our Everlight with the new Furion and then we'll just now go from I there. Will read the instructions. Now read instructions. He's been yelling at me, read the instructions, read the instructions, because there's a little wire hanging. I just want to plug it in and see. Yeah. But I don't think we're gonna Chalk one up for the guys. I wanted to read the instructions first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this, but there's the flashing around here. Basically, you just kind of get behind it and just pull it off, I think. Oh, you lift up. So you get it out and you lift up and it comes right out holes here you have one here but you don't want to undo this one because this one's in the um fireplace you just want to do this one because this goes into the actual wood all right so everything's unscrewed it should just pull out oh yeah oh my god that's it all right so you got handles on the side oh so they don't have it hardwired in either no it's not hard it's just plugged in 
here's what here's my theory on why i think the blower blows up this is the back this is where it's at and as you can see it only takes up this much depth which is god that's got to be eight and a half ten inches and you can see all that that's probably like a foot and a half so all that is empty space now what i think happens is the air has to come in to the back and this is the intake for the air and as you can see here's the blower in there that little thing spins now that actually may be the sensor right there but i think it ends up it ends up getting suffocated with the air in here so it may be sucking in hot air or maybe getting suffocated so that no more air gets sucked in and with this thing generating heat it just blows the mower sets the temperature sensor off and it just stops working like i said before it does create heat but the blower stops working to blow it out to circulate air for some reason we just turned it on and everything worked of course well, so, we don't know if it would work for long yeah we don't know how it's a very good point we don't know how long it's going to work for so i really wish grand design would make this on a pull out tray so you can put stuff back there obviously per put a put a protective blocker back here because you know let's say it goes to 10 inches and you still have 10 extra inches you can put couch pillows back there you can put a couple blankets back there it's just wasted space all right so just like the other one i plugged it in and i guess okay that comes off it's just the flashing and i'm going to see how these holes line up so on this one there's just holes there I don't know if I'm going to need the clamps from the other one, but we will see what it looks like. Four screws in. This ain't going anywhere. That was easy. Now let's see if we can fit the uh, flashing on it. Furion is a lot easier to install. On the back here, these little screws are all magnetized. So there's four of them, two on each side. So what it does is it magnetizes to the metal whereas the other one there was a couple little hooks and a slider and it was on so we'll see if this bounces out we're installed power on hot oh god god that's hot no that's gotta go off Whew. hot yeah. so the fan is still on it's kicking out cold air so it's cooling everything off in there which is kind of nice so let's go for the very nice oh by the way that's the model number the also satisfying peel that was it super easy install as for us we replaced the fireplace so we'll see how this cold cold snap goes in florida and we're gonna test it out thanks for watching guys make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification because next week you're going to find out what's in that box. We're going to do some more installation. Also, leave a comment down below. How have you been liking our interviews? If you ever wanted to get feedback or what it's like to be a brand new full-timer, check out last week's video where we interviewed Rivers on the Road. Brand new young couple full-timers with two kids and they share some of their experiences they've had already on the road. Till next Monday, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the road.